Hi, today we're going to be learning about subtracting integers. So we're going to start off by looking at some an example of what we mean by subtracting integers. Okay, so in our first example, we have got negative 1 minus positive 2 minus negative 3 minus positive 1. Okay, so in our last lesson, we had also integers but we were adding those integers. Today we're going to be subtracting the integers and so it's going to look a little bit different and we work a little bit differently as well. But Dottie is still going to help us out with this one like just like she did yesterday or in the last lesson. So here is Dottie and we're going to be looking at her on the number line again. Okay, so let's go and have a look at what happens when she deals with this expression. Okay, so over here, first of all, for our very first integer, if you remember from the last lesson, you'll remember that there was, if there's nothing in front of it, it means that it's actually zero plus. So the first integer, integer is not being subtracted. So this is going to behave the same as the ones we did in the last lesson. So when I have zero plus, she's facing the front, she's facing the positive direction, and she takes, in this case, a step backwards. So she's going to go like this. But then I'm going to start subtracting. And as soon as I start subtracting, she is going to turn around. So now she's facing the negative direction. And because she's facing the negative direction, when she steps forwards, she's going to end up going in the negative direction. And when she steps backwards, she's going to end up going in the positive direction. Okay, so now she's going to take two steps forwards because we have a positive two. So she's going to go one, two, like that. And then she's going to take three steps backwards. So she's going to go one, two, three. But now because she's going backwards and she's facing the negative direction, she's actually going in a positive direction. Even though this is a negative integer, she went in the positive direction. And then the last one over here, she takes one step forwards again. So she's going to go from there back to here again. And that means that because she was going in, because she's facing the negative direction, because we are subtracting, when she took a step forwards, she actually ended up going in the negative direction. Okay, so even though this is a positive one, she ended up going in a negative direction. Took, she took a step, uh, one step in the negative direction. Okay, so where she ended up for this question is negative one. So this all over here, negative one minus positive two minus negative three minus positive one, all of that resulted in negative one. Okay, so now let's just do a recap of what was actually happening over here. So when we had a negative, first of all, just to remind you, for our very first number, because there was nothing in front of it, it was actually a plus. Okay, remember like we had yesterday or in the, in the last lesson, the uh, sign in front of your very first term, if there's nothing there, it means it's actually zero plus. So this one we treated like normal and she, it, it ended up giving us a negative one, just like it normally would do. Okay, but now over here, when we are subtracting, as soon as we have a minus in front of it, it means we are subtracting that integer. Now that means that Dottie is facing the negative direction. And because she's facing the negative direction, if she takes a step forwards because it's a positive integer, that means that she ends up moving in the negative direction, not in the positive direction. And if she takes a step backwards, if it's a negative integer, then it means that she ends up moving in the positive direction instead of the negative direction. So if we have minus and then a positive number, remember the minus tells me that she's facing the negative direction and the positive number tells me that she's stepping forwards. So she's stepping forwards in the negative direction. So that is effectively what actually happens is she takes one step or that number of steps rather in the negative direction. Okay, now if I have a minus, so she's facing the negative direction, but I have a negative number inside my bracket, so my integer is a negative number, then because she's facing the negative direction, but she takes a step or she takes that number of steps backwards, what ends up happening is she ends up moving in the positive direction. So over here, I have a plus. 
She moves in the positive direction for that number of steps. Okay, so now what you can see over here is if I've got a minus in front of my brackets over here, then this sign is going to change to the opposite sign because she's facing the negative direction. And if she is stepping forwards, that means she's going in the negative direction. And over here, she's facing the negative direction. But if she's stepping backwards, it means she actually ends up going in the positive direction. So over here, it went from a minus to a plus. So when I've got a minus in front of the brackets, and a plus inside the brackets, it actually gives me a minus. And when I've got a minus in front of the brackets and a, and a minus inside the brackets, it actually ends up giving me a plus. So when I'm subtracting a positive number, I end up with a negative result. And when I am subtracting a negative number, I end up with a positive result. Okay, so over here, this is important for you to know when you're subtracting, your sign inside the bracket is going to change to a minus if it was a plus, and if it was a minus, it's going to change to a plus. Okay, so over here, I could have taken this question and I could have dropped the brackets and done this. I could say minus one, and then over here, my, oh, let me just rewrite it. So plus, minus positive two, minus negative three, minus positive one. Okay, so first of all, the very first one acts exactly like normal because there's nothing in front. So it's, there's not a minus in front. And because there's not a minus in front, the sign inside is going to stay as it is. So it's going to be minus one, just like it was when we we're doing adding integers. Okay, but as soon as I have a minus in front of that bracket, it is going to cause the sign inside the bracket to change. And that means that I'm going to get an, a minus and a plus gives me a minus two. Okay. And over here, I have a minus. She's facing the negative direction, but now she's stepping backwards, which means she's going in the positive direction. So that's going to be plus three. And over here, again, she's facing the negative direction and she steps forwards, which means she goes in the negative direction. So that's minus one. So now what I end up with over here is negative one minus two is negative three. Remember we learned in our last lesson that when they have the same sign, um, then we add the absolute values and we just keep the signs the same. So it's going to be negative three. And then I have plus three. So that cancels out and gives me zero. And then I end up minusing one again, which gives me negative one. So that whole thing gave me the negative one that I end up, ended up with over there. Okay, so now we're going to do an example where you have over here negative 3 minus negative 9. Okay, so a reminder when we are working this out, first we want to get rid of our brackets. We want to try and eliminate those because it just causes confusion. So what we're going to do is our very first one, which has nothing in front of it. If there was a minus in front here, then I would do the same as I'm doing over here. But because there's nothing in front of this bracket, then I'm just going to drop the brackets and I keep the sign exactly as it is inside. If it was a plus, I wouldn't need to write that plus. But if it's a minus, I must write it. So it's going to stay negative three. But as soon as there's a minus in front of the brackets, that means that I need to change the sign that's inside here because when I subtract a negative number, the result is that I get a positive number. And when I subtract a positive number, the result is that I get a negative number. Okay, so here I'm subtracting a negative number. So that gives me a positive and that is still nine over there. So the absolute value stays the same. Okay, now I'm going to go and simplify that. So now I can say, okay, well, because I have two things over here that have opposite signs, I am going to subtract the absolute values. So nine minus three gives me six. And then I take the sign of the one that has the higher absolute value. In this case, that is the nine. And that is the sign that my answer is going to get. So because the nine is positive, my answer is going to be positive as well. Okay, so that's what you should have done for what, or that is what you need to do for that example. So now I'm going to give you a few that you're going to try for yourselves. Okay, so you have got four questions here. I'm going to give you one minute for each question. So you're going to start the first question and you have a minute to do it.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So in question A, you had negative 6 minus positive 4. So first of all, we're going to get rid of our brackets. The first one, there's nothing in front of the bracket, so that's actually positive in front of the bracket. It's a plus. So then we can just keep the sign that's inside the brackets the same. So it's going to be negative 6. But as soon as I have a minus in front of the bracket, like I have for this one over here, it means that that sign is going to change. It's going to swap over. If it's positive, it's going to become negative. So it's going to be minus 4. Okay, so now I've got negative 6 minus 4. So now because they both have the same sign, I can add their absolute values and keep the sign the same. So instead of um, worrying about the fact that they are both negative, I don't have to worry about that. I just need to, because they have the same sign, I can just add their absolute value. So that the absolute value of this one is just 6. And the absolute value of this one is 4. So I can add those and that gives me 10. And then because the signs were both negative, I'm going to have a negative answer. Okay, so now question B. Again, you have a minute to work on it. Okay, so let's go through that example. So for question B, we had positive 8 minus negative 3. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to get rid of my brackets. So over here, like, a, like we had in the previous example, there is a plus in front. You can't see it, but it's there. Okay, so that means that the sign inside the brackets is going to stay as it is. But now because it's a plus, I don't actually have to write that sign when I get rid of the brackets. So I can just write down 8. Okay. Remember, if we don't have a sign in front, it is automatically positive. Now, over here, I've got a minus, and then I've got negative 3. So remember, Dottie is facing the negative, the negative direction, but she's stepping backwards, which means that she's actually moving in the positive direction. So that's the same as plus 3. So remember, when we have a negative in front of the brackets, when we have minus, and then we have a negative inside, that negative inside is going to change from negative to positive when we get rid of those brackets. Okay, so two minuses give us a plus like that. Okay, then eight plus three, now this is just a normal sum that we can work out. Eight plus three, that gives us 11. Okay, question C. Again, you have one minute to work on it. Okay, let's go through that example. Okay, so in this question, question C, you had negative 2 minus negative 7. And so first of all, we're going to get rid of those brackets. That gives us negative 2 because remember, there's nothing in front of here. So because it's not a minus, we don't change that sign. And over here, I've got minus negative 7. So because this is a minus, that sign is going to change to a plus. So it's going to become plus 7. 
Okay, so now both of these have got different signs. So when we have different signs, we need to subtract the absolute values and keep the sign of the larger absolute value. So in this case, so I've got 7 minus 2. That gives me 5. And the 7 is positive. That's the one with the higher absolute value. So that is going to, my answer is going to be positive as well. Okay, so now you're going to do the last one, question D. And you have one minute for this one as well. Okay, let's go through that example. So in question D, we have positive 3 minus positive 7. Okay, so first of all, our positive 3, when we drop the brackets, is going to remain positive because there's nothing in front of it. There's no minus in front of it. Okay, so it's just going to stay positive 3, but I don't need to write the plus. I can just write the 3. And then minus positive 7, the minus in front means that she's facing the negative direction, but she's stepping forwards, which means that she's moving in the negative direction as well. So this is going to be the same as minus 7. So remember, when we have a minus in front of the brackets, it causes the sign inside the brackets to change from, in this case, from a positive to a negative. Okay, so we have minus 7. Right, so now we have 3 minus 7. I've got a positive and a negative, so I need to... Um, I need to subtract the absolute values. So 7 minus 3 is 4. And then my answer is going to get the sign of the integer that has the higher absolute value. So in this case, it is the 7, so which is negative. So it's going to be negative 4. So that's what you should have got for question D. Right. So now we're going to go on to an example that is a bit more complicated. Okay. So in this example, we have got... negative 2 minus negative 5 minus positive 8 minus positive 4 minus negative 1 minus negative 6 minus positive 9 minus negative 3. Okay. So now this one, we have got obviously a lot of extra numbers that we're going to be working with. Okay, now we dealt with something similar to this um, in our last lesson where we were adding we were adding integers. But the difference is we can't just go and move things around quite the same as we did then. Because when we are subtracting integers, subtraction is not commutative. I can't move these things around when I have subtraction. At least not in the same way that I could when I was um, adding Okay, so what we're going to do is, just like we did over here, we're going to start off by, get, by getting rid of all of our brackets. Okay, so first I have negative 2, and that's going to stay negative because there's no minus in front. It's a positive in front, so that's going to stay negative. Then I've got negative or minus negative 5. Because it's minus and then it's a negative, it's going to change to a plus 5. Here I've got minus and then positive 8, so that's just going to change to a minus 8. Then here again I've got minus and then a positive 4, so it's going to change to a minus 4. Then here I've got minus and then negative 1, so that's going to change to plus 1. And here I've got minus and then negative 6, so that's going to change to plus 6. Then I've got minus and then positive 9, so it's going to change to minus 9. And finally, I've got minus and then negative 3, that's going to change to plus 3. Okay, 
So now I've got something that looks a little bit more normal, but it's still I've got positives and negatives all mixed up. And that's not going to really be easy for me to, to simplify. I want to be able to have my positives first and my negatives last, like I was able to do when I was doing addition. But now I want you to have a look at this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite this so that I am adding these integers in the same way that we had for addition of integers in our last lesson. I'm just going to take each of these and I'm going to put pluses in between them. And it's not going to change the value. It's not going to change the meaning of the expression at all. So I'm going to have negative 2. So I'm putting that in brackets and then plus and then positive 5. So I'm putting that in brackets and then plus and then negative 8 plus negative 4 plus positive 1 plus positive 6 plus negative 9 plus positive 3. Okay, so what I've actually done here is I've kind of gone backwards. We normally want to get rid of the brackets. Okay, but here what I've done is I've put those brackets back in and I've shown that I am adding these integers. Now, because I can add the integers like this, I can now use my commutative property and I can say, but now I can move things around because it's addition, I can move things around. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and find all of my positive integers. There's a positive integer. There is a positive integer. There is a positive integer. And there is a positive integer. And I'm going to write all of those first. So that is positive 5 then positive 1 plus positive 1 plus positive 6 and then plus positive 3. So those are all my positive integers. Then I have plus negative 2 plus negative 8 plus negative 4 and then plus negative 9. Okay, so now that I've done that, I can go and simplify all of my positives. Or I can, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drop all of those brackets. I'm not going to simplify the positives yet. I'm going to drop all of those brackets. So over here, remember when we have pluses in front of our brackets, the signs inside the brackets are all just going to stay as they are. So this is actually the same as just 5 plus 1 plus 6 plus 3 and then minus 2 minus 8 minus 4 and minus 9. So basically, this line over here is exactly, has the sa exactly the same meaning as this line over here. Okay, so now I want you to look very carefully at what has actually happened over here. So I had 5, which was positive, and here my 5 is positive, and it's moved to the front. Then I have 1, which was positive, and here I have 1, which is positive. Here I have 6, which was positive, and here I have 6, which is positive, and here I have 3, which was positive, and 3, which was positive. And then over here I have 2 was negative, and here I have 2 was negative. Then I have 8 was negative, and here 8 is negative. Then 4 was negative, and here 4 is negative, and then 9 was negative there, and here 9 is negative as well. So what happened is I was able to move everything around so long as I kept the signs with them. Okay, so even though su subtraction is not commutative, if I've got rid of the brackets, so long as I keep the sign with the number that, it, that is after that sign, I can move the things around. It doesn't matter what order I write them, so long as I keep the sign with its number. Okay, and the sign belongs to the, the number that follows the sign. So in this case over here, this minus belongs to the 2. The plus belongs to the 5. The minus belongs to the 8. The minus belongs to the 4, and so on. So, lo so as long as I move the sign with the number after it, I can move them around. So I don't have to show this step and I don't have to show this step I can go straight from there directly to there so long as I keep the sign with the number that follows it I can move them around as I need to so now that I've got them in this order I can do all the positives and then I can do all the negatives so let's have a look at all of our positives so these ones are all of my pluses 
all my positives. And then over here, I've got all of my negatives, like that. So now I'm going to go and simplify all of my positives. And remember, because they all have the same sign, I can just add their absolute values and keep the sign the same. So 5 plus 1 is 6, plus 6 is 12, plus 3 is 15. So this whole thing gives me 15. And then over here, I have 2 and 8 is 10, and 4 is 14, and 9 is 23. And because they're all negative, it's going to be minus 23. Just adding the absolute values and keeping the sign the same. Here I added the absolute values and kept the sign the same. I didn't have to write the plus, but it is still positive. And now I can just simplify that like I normally do. I can subtract the absolute values. So 23 minus 15, and that gives me 8. And then I keep the sign of the 1 with a bigger absolute value, which is the 23. So that's going to be negative 8. So that's what you should get for that example. So now we're going to do another example where we're going to do the same thing, but we're not going to put in this whole step here. We're just going to move the, the numbers around, keeping the signs with the numbers. Okay, so the next example we're going to do is positive 8 minus negative 3 minus positive 2 minus positive 7 minus negative 4, minus negative 9, minus positive 5, and minus negative 1. Okay, so in this example, the first thing we're going to do is we are going to get rid of all of those brackets. So the very first one is positive 8. There's nothing in front of the brackets, so it's going to stay positive. So that's just going to be 8. Then, I have minus negative 3. So the negative, because there's a minus in front, that negative is going to change to a plus 3. And here there's a minus in front, so it's positive 2 is going to change to minus 2. Here the minus positive 7 is going to change to minus 7. Minus negative 4 is going to change to plus 4. Minus negative 9 is going to change to plus 9. Minus positive 5 is going to change to minus 5. And then finally, minus negative 1 is going to change to plus 1. Okay, so now I've got rid of all of my brackets. So all of that is gone. I don't have to worry about it anymore. Now I can go and I can move things around the way that I want to so that I can have all my positives together and all of my negatives together. So I'm going to put all of my positives together. But remember, when we move these numbers around, we have to keep the sign with the number. And the sign that belongs to the number is the sign in front of the number. Okay, so 8 is already positive. So first of all, I'm going to identify all of my positives. Okay, so I've got 8 is positive. The 3 is positive, so it's plus 3. And I've got plus 4 and plus 9 and plus 1. So those are all the ones that I want to have written first. And the pluses need to go with the numbers that follow them. So I'm going to have 8 plus 3 plus 4 plus 9 and plus 1. And then all the negatives are the ones that I'm going to write next. So I've got minus 2, minus 7 and minus 5. And those minuses have to stay with those numbers as well. So I've got minus 2, minus 7 and minus 5. Okay, so now I can simplify all of my positives. And I can simplify all of my negatives, and then I can simplify the whole expression together. Okay, so I've got for my positives, 8 plus 3 is 11, plus 4 is 15, plus 9 is 24, plus 1 is 25. And then for my negatives, I've got 2 minus 7 is, or 2 plus 7 rather, is 9, plus 5 is 14, but because they are all negatives, it's going to be minus 14. Okay, so now I have 24 minus 14, or 25 minus 14, which gives me 11. And that is what you should get for that example. So now I'm going to give you a couple that you're going to try for yourself. Okay, I'm going to give you for each example, I'm going to give you two minutes to do it. So you're going to work on the first one for two minutes.
Okay, so let's go through that example. So for question A, we had positive 8 minus negative 2 minus negative 6 minus positive 9 minus positive 1 minus negative 7 minus positive 5. Okay, so first of all, we're going to drop all of those brackets. So the first set of brackets, there's nothing in front, so the sign is going to stay as it is. So the positive 8 is going to remain positive 8. Okay. Then I've got minus negative 2. Because there's a minus in front of the brackets, we're going to change that sign and it's going to become plus 2. Over here, the negative 6 is going to change to plus 6 because I'm minusing it. So it's plus 6. Then here, I'm minusing positive 9, so it's going to become minus 9. Here, I'm minusing positive 1, so it's become minus 1 because it changes because I have a minus in front. Then I've got minus negative 7, that's going to become plus 7. And then minus positive 5 is going to become minus 5. So that's what your next line should have looked like, where you have dropped all the brackets. And because all of these are minuses, that we're minusing all of them rather, all of the signs inside the brackets are going to be changing. Okay, once we've done that, we're then going to go and group all of our pluses and our minuses together. So I'm going to look for all of my positive numbers. So the 8 is positive. The 2 is plus 2, then I've got plus 6, and over here I've got plus 7. So I'm going to put all of those together, and I'm going to put all of my minuses together. So I've got minus 9, and minus 1, and minus 5. And remember, when I move them, I have to keep the sign with the number. So I have to move the sign with the number. So it's the 8, then plus 2, and plus 6, and then over here I've got plus 7. So that comes over here, plus 7. Then I've got minus 9, and then minus 1, and then minus 5. Okay, so now I'm going to go and simplify all of my pluses. So all of those I'm going to simplify together. And all of these, my minuses, I'm going to simplify together. Okay, so now I have got... 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 6 is 16, plus 7 is 23. So that's going to be 23 over there, and it's positive. And then I've got 9 and 1 makes 10, and 50, 5 makes 15. So that's going to be minus 15. So I've got 23 minus 15, and that all together should give you if we subtract 23 and 15, that gives us 8. And because the one with the higher positive with the higher absolute value is positive, it's going to be positive 8. So that's what you should have got for question A. Right, so now I'm going to give you two minutes to work on question B.
Okay, so let's go through question B. So here we have negative 3 minus negative 6 minus positive 4 minus positive 5 minus negative 2 minus negative 1 minus positive 8 and minus negative 7. So first we're going to drop all of our brackets. So I'm going to have negative 3 because that doesn't change because it's a plus in front. And then I have plus negative 6 becomes plus or minus, sorry, minus negative 6 becomes plus 6. Then minus positive 4 becomes minus 4. Minus positive 5 becomes minus 5. Minus negative 2 becomes plus 2. Minus negative 1 becomes plus 1. And minus positive 8 becomes minus 8. And finally, minus negative 7 becomes plus 7. Okay, so now we've got rid of all of our brackets. Now we can go and move things around. So long as we're keeping the signs with the numbers, we can move things around to make it a little bit easier for ourselves. Okay, so first I'm going to identify all of my positives. So I've got positive 6 and positive 2 and positive 1 and positive 7. And then all of my negatives, I've got negative 3 and negative 4 and negative 5 and negative 8. Okay, so all of my positives I have got over here, positive 6. So that's just 6. Because I'm writing it first, I don't have to write the plus. Then I've got positive 2, so it's plus 2, then plus 1, and then plus 7. And then all of my negatives, so I've got minus 3, and then minus 4, minus 5, and finally minus 8. So now I can go and simplify all of my positives and all of my negatives, like that. Okay, so my pluses. 6 plus 2 is 8, plus 1 is 9, plus 7 is 16. So that gives me positive 16. And then my negatives, I've got 3 and 4 is 7. With We add 5 and that gives me 12, and then add 8 and that gives me 20. And then because they're all negative, I'm just going to have minus 20. So now because I've got 16 minus 20, my signs are different, so I'm going to subtract the absolute value. So it's 20 minus 16 gives me 4, and because the one that has the higher absolute value is negative, my answer is going to be negative. So it's negative 4. Okay, so that's what you should have got for question B. Now we're going to do another example. In this example, we've got positive 2 minus negative 5 minus negative 6, minus positive 5, minus negative 7, minus negative 9, minus positive 7, minus positive 3. Okay, so in this example, just like we did in the previous two, or previous three, we're going to drop our brackets first. So this is going to be just positive 2, which is just 2. Then minus negative 5 becomes plus 5. Minus negative 6 becomes plus 6. Minus positive 5 becomes minus 5. Minus negative 7 becomes plus 7. Minus negative 9 becomes plus 9. Minus positive 7 becomes minus 7. And minus positive 3 becomes minus 3. Okay, now in this example, you may have noticed that there are a couple of numbers that are similar. So I've got over here a plus 5 and I've got a minus 5 okay so just like we had when we we're doing a adding integers when we had integers that had the same absolute value but opposite signs we were able to cancel them out so my plus 5 and my minus 5 can cancel each other out so I don't have to worry about them anymore and I also have over here plus 7 and minus 7 they can also cancel each other out so long as they have the same absolute value and opposite signs I can cancel them out. Then I don't have to worry about them when I'm doing my addition and subtraction. Okay, so now let's go and identify all of our positive numbers. So I've got positive 2 and positive 6 and positive 9. And my negative numbers, I have just got this minus 3 over here. So I'm going to go and write those with all the positives first. So I've got 2 plus 6 keeping the sign with it, and plus 9. And then I've got my only negative, which is that minus 3. And now I'm going to simplify that. 
So my positives over here, 2 plus 6 plus 9, 2 plus 6 is 8 plus 9 is 17, so that gives me positive 17. And then this one and only little negative over here is not going to change, so it's just going to stay minus 3. So now I have 17 minus 3, and because they have opposite signs, I'm going to subtract the absolute value. So 17 minus 3 gives me 14, and I keep the sign of the one with the highest absolute value, which is in this case the 17, so it's positive. So it's going to be positive 14. So that's what you should get for that example. So now I'm going to give you a couple more to do for yourself that you're going to practice with, and you're going to have two minutes to do each of these. And remember to look for any that you can cancel out because it's going to make your life easier. Okay, so for the first example over here, you have two minutes to work on that. Okay, so let's go through that example. So in question A, we had positive 3 minus negative 6 minus positive 2 minus positive 8 minus positive 6 minus positive 5 minus negative 8. Okay, so first of all, we're going to get rid of all of those brackets. So that gives me 3 plus 6 minus 2 minus 8 minus 6 minus 5 and then plus 8. Okay, so first what we're going to do is we are going to see if there's anything that we cancel that we can cancel out over here. Okay, so if you look at it, there's three over here. There are no other threes, so I can't do anything with that. Six, I've got plus six, and here I've got minus six. They have the same absolute value but opposite signs, so I can cancel those out. Then here I've got minus two. I can't do anything because there's no other twos. Here I've got minus eight, and here I've got plus eight. Same absolute value, but opposite sign, so I can cancel those out. And then I've got minus 5. Okay, so now I'm going to, oh, first I'm going to go and identify all my positives. So I've got over here, positive 3, and it looks like there are no other positives that I haven't had to cancel out, or that I couldn't cancel out, rather. Okay, and then my negatives, I've got negative 2 and negative 8 over there, or negative 5, rather, sorry. Okay, so now I'm going to write down all my positives, so that's just the 3 over there. And then I've got minus 2 and minus 5. So I can simplify my positive, or I can keep it the same rather, so that's just 3. And then my negatives, I can add the absolute values because they have the same sign. So 2 and 5 gives me 7, and I keep the minus the same, so it's negative 7. So minus 7, 3 minus 7, that I'm going to subtract the... Uh, the absolute value. So I've got 7 minus 3 gives me 4, and I keep the sign of the one with the higher absolute value. So that's going to be negative 4. 
Okay, so that's what you should have got for question A. Now I'm going to give you two minutes again to work on question B. Okay, let's go through that last example. So question B, we're first going to get rid of all of our brackets. We have negative 6, that's going to stay negative 6. But then here I have minus positive 7 becomes minus 7. Then minus negative 4 becomes plus 4. Minus positive 9 becomes minus 9. Minus positive 4 becomes minus 4. Minus negative 6 becomes plus 6 minus positive 9 becomes minus 9, and minus negative 1 becomes plus 1. Okay, so let's go through and see if there's anything that we can cancel out here. So first of all, I have negative 6, and then over here, I have positive 6. Because they have the same absolute value but opposite signs, I can cancel them out. So the negative 6 and the positive 6, I can cross out. Then I have got over here, set negative 7. There are no other 7s, so I can't do anything with that. Here I've got negative 4. And then here I've got positive 4. Positive 4 and then negative 4. So again, because they have the same absolute value, but opposite signs, I can cancel them out. Over here, I have negative 9. And over here, I also have a 9, but it's also negative. Because the, even though they have the same absolute value, because they have the same sign, I cannot cancel those ones out. And then over here, I have positive 1, which I can't cancel out with anything else. Okay, so now let's go and identify all of our positives that are left. So I've got negative, 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 and here I've got a positive. It's the only positive that I have left. And then these ones are my negatives over here. Okay, so now let's write down our positives first. So it's just the positive 1. So that's 1 over there. And then I've got negative 7. So it's minus 7, and then minus 9, and then minus another 9. Okay, so now I'm going to simplify my positives and my negatives. So here's my positive over there. There's nothing else to do with it. It's just going to stay as it is. And then I've got my negatives over here. Okay, so the 1 stays 1. And then I've got minus 7, minus 9, minus 9. Because they all are negative, I'm going to add the absolute values. So 7 plus 9 is 16, plus another 9 is 25. So that's going to give me 25, but it's negative because they are all negative. So it's minus 25. Okay, and then when I simplify that, I'm going to end up subtracting the absolute values because they have opposite signs. So I have 25 minus 1 is 24. And because the high, the one with the higher absolute value is negative, my answer is going to be negative 24. So that's what you should have got for question B. Okay, so that is subtracting integers. I hope that, that has been helpful. I hope that you understand how to subtract integers now. And 
as always it is now a good idea to go and do some extra practice if you're looking for extra questions to practice with you can click on the link in the description below and you can find more questions there have a fantastic day thank you goodbye now that we've learned the concepts in this lesson it's important to practice 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 if you haven't already got the worksheet that goes with this video you can find it by clicking on the link in the description below the worksheet comes with an extra exercise full of questions for you to work on to master the concepts covered in this lesson if you found this video helpful, please hit the like button so that others can benefit from it too. Also, be sure to subscribe so that you can easily find my other lessons and hit the bell so that you will get notified about lessons as I upload them.